it's Carla. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Carla, an artist and author from the Philippines. This channel is for posting my painting process, some tutorials, and new art materials that I'm gushing about. If you're into that, I invite you to subscribe to my channel, and together, let's keep on creating. I've been meaning to film another watercolor time lapse, but I couldn't find the right drawing to paint. I posted a photo in the community tab showing what I made that I wasn't satisfied with. I made too many mistakes and the paper wasn't forgiving with the erasures, so I decided to let it go and make a new one. This is an example of allowing yourself to make mistakes, assess where you can improve, let it go and move to the next piece. This is now the second drawing I made for filming. It's on a different paper than the previous one. I like it better now, so I decided to paint it. A lot of people ask me about the pencil I use for sketching. I use Pilot Color Eno with Red Lee. It's my favorite as it blends beautifully with watercolor. I'm using a lot of water in my initial watercolor washes. I like my style for this painting to be very loose and kind of carefree, as if I'm playing with water. I take my time in making this initial wet on wet wash as it sets the mood for the rest of the painting. Two tips I can give you here is first, make sure your paper can hold up a lot of water. It's my first time to use this paper and I'm honestly surprised it didn't buckle as much. I got it for free from a local art shop and it didn't have any cover or brand, so I will investigate what this paper is. And my second tip is start with a light color wash and build it as you go. You can use a large brush for this so that you can really feel the strokes as you make them. Use a tissue to test the brush first as we don't want to drop a blob of water on the paper. It's also best to wait for the wash to dry before moving to the next part of the painting. I usually watch booktube while painting. I take note of their book recommendations in review and I find it so nice to hear them gush about books they love. How about you? What do you watch or listen to when you paint? Let me know in the comments below! Using a mixture of Mars Violet and Burnt Umber, I'm now painting the features of the portrait. I like to start with this as it's very important to get it right before moving to the other elements. I used to make this type of dreamy art style in my early watercolor days. Then I shifted to bolder and more detailed ones. I like to experiment on styles, so I'm not really sure even with many years of painting if I have an art style. Maybe my art style is just ever-changing? And I think that's okay. As artists, we are constantly changing and improving based on what inspires us and what stage of our lives we are in. So don't be afraid to let go of your art style, seek to develop a new one, and continue to grow as an artist. I'm now using paint screen to add more depth and values to the portrait. This is one of my most used color, and it's rare that I won't use it on any painting. I decided not to completely paint the hair, just hints of it to allow the art to appear subtle and transparent, as if she's a reflection in the water. To give more definition to her features, I'm using Faber-Castell's Polychromos, also in paint gray. This helps me better control the lines and shading as it is pencil rather than a brush. I do have to make sure it is sharpened very well in order to use it. I've been using colored pencils more these days and purchased a number of them in skin tone colors as well as colors that caught my eye. It makes me excited to use them and see how they will enhance my painting. Have you tried using colored pencils in your watercolors? Any brands you prefer to use? Please do share them in the comments. I'm now adding the highlights on her eyes. I'm using Posca marker in white, which I just put in my palette, then use a detail brush to apply. This will help me control the placement and amount of the white acrylic. Adding white on her eyes will make it pop and completes her facial features. And that's it for day one of this painting. I'll be continuing the flowers in day two.
Now we move to painting the white flowers in day two. I'm using the same technique as I did with the portrait, um, but more subtle since I want the flowers to appear very soft and delicate. When you think about painting white flowers, it doesn't necessarily mean to use white paint or not paint them at all since they are white. When you observe a flower in nature, it is never just white. There are many colors you can observe on the flower and that's what we are trying to achieve in this painting. I'm mostly using paints gray for shadow and also a little bit of rose matter because I like the combination of these two. Paints gray gives me the values to show each petal, while a hint of pink adds a more delicate and feminine touch to the flower, as if it is bathed in a dreamy pink light. That's just my way of painting white flowers, and it is by no means the only way to paint them. I encourage you to observe white flowers in nature or in your garden and try to paint them. Try to experiment how you will convey each white petal and see if there are colors that you can make them as delicate and as loose as possible. I tried to do more dry brushing in this painting. It gave the painting more textures and I didn't want it to look smooth and perfect. You can't see it much in the video, but it's quite subtle and really nice in real life. I'm onto the last flower of the painting, but my cat wanted to seek attention. I usually bring her out of the room when I paint, but this time she was asleep for a long time, then woke up. Every time I look at my cat, I feel sad that they have such a short lifespan compared to us humans. But I'm also happy that Fuji chose me to be her mom. So it became a lot easier for me to paint the last flower of the painting because I already have the color palette that I have in mind, which is the paints gray with just hints of um, rose matter. So I'm going to keep on painting the last flower, add a few more finishing touches, and that will be it for this painting. I will add some music and I hope you keep on watching. And that's it. That's my portrait with white flowers. Um, I hope that you enjoy watching this watercolor painting of mine. If you like this kind of video, please don't forget to subscribe and like and leave a comment below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!